Hello and welcome to part 5 of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. My name is Colin, and in this tutorial, not so many series, we're creating this 2D platformer video game. Of course, in this game, you control the player on screen using keys on your keyboard. Of course, you can walk, run, jump, and fall. You can squash enemies, get hurt by enemies, and lose lives. You can collect coins, collect keys to unlock doors, do wall jumps, shoot fireballs, all that great 2D platformer game action. Of course, this is part five in this mini series on how to create this entire game from start to finish. If you have not seen parts one, two, three, and four, I'll put a link to this whole playlist up on the screen right now so you can go ahead and follow along from the beginning. So right now in this mini series we have a character and we have a couple of really not great looking platforms or floor objects in the game. In this video we're going to scrap those not great looking floor objects and in their place we're going to add what's called a tile map and this is a node in Godot, a tile map, and with this tile map you can create a tile set which will allow you to bring in pictures which act as tiles that you can make act like like static body physics objects. And with a tile map, you can use these tiles and just paint your level and choose which tiles go in which spot on a grid in your level. And so it's really fast and really fun to create a whole large world that just looks great. This is really the most creative part of this whole tutorial mini series, excluding all the code we're writing to make our game as well. In fact, making a tile map like this requires absolutely no code whatsoever. So no code in this video today, okay? Let's go ahead and jump in. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Godot or Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So first things first, let's get rid of these not great looking platforms. They are called floor one and floor two. I'll select each one, right click on it, say delete node. When I do that, it'll make sure that I actually want to get rid of that whole uh, branch of nodes and I'll press OK because each floor is made up of several nodes. Okay, so right click and delete and OK. In their place, we're gonna add a tile map to our level one. So I'm gonna select level one and I'll press plus. And from our available nodes, I'm gonna search for tile. And here it is, it's blue, it's called tile map. If you wanna know where this is actually located, if I clear my search under node 2D, it's just right there, okay? So I'll select that and press create. And because I had the level one node selected, when I added it, it's now a child of level one. As you can see, if I have this new tile map node selected, I get a orange grid on my screen in my level if I'm in the 2D workspace. These orange squares, this orange grid, shows me where my tiles can be placed. If I don't like the size of these tiles, if I wanna change it, that is with a tile map selected over here in the inspector, the properties of that tile map under cell. The default size is 64 by 64 pixels per tile. This will depend on the size of the images that you use for your tile set. Speaking of which, I'm going to be giving you a link to download this folder of tile images. These are created by Kenny at www.kenny.nl. Kenny, if you're not aware, is an amazing resource. He's a creator who makes a ton of game assets. That means sprites, vector art, 3D models, sounds, music, everything you need to make a simple starter game. He gives away lots of his assets for free, but he also sells them in packs. And when you download, I think, any of his assets, you're allowed to use them in your projects, including for-profit projects, because all of his art, as far as I'm aware, is royalty-free, Creative Commons, zero public domain. So that's why I'm able to give these away to you in the link below this video on YouTube. So I'm going to take this folder called World Tiles. You'll get it in a zip file from the download link below this video on YouTube. You'll need to unzip it and then I'm going to right click and copy this whole folder. I'm going to go into my game project folder. I've got an assets folder. I'll go in there and I'll right click and paste. So now I've got all of those PNG images in my project folder. Just so you are aware, if I right click and go to the properties in Windows for any of these pictures, most of them anyways, they are, for the most part, if I go to details, 64 by 64 pixels. Lots of the tiles that Kenny makes and publishes are 70 by 70 
pixels. And so if you have a different size that's not 64 by 64 for all of your tiles, you'll need to change a setting. I'll show you it in a sec. But if you decide to make your own tiles, you need to make sure that they are seamless together. And that's quite a tricky thing to do because if you start with a larger picture file, let's say in Photoshop or GIMP, and you scale the picture down, depending on your settings, you might get like a transparent or blurred row of pixels on the sides, depending on your original resolution and what scaling you're doing. Okay, so just keep that in mind. These ones fit very perfectly well together. So you might want to start off with these ones. Okay, so back into the Godot editor. If you don't have, and by the way, you saw hopefully just there in a blink of an eye, it imported all of those pictures that I put into my project folder. So now I've got all these world tile images over here. If your tiles are not 64 by 64, you need to change this cell size over here. But now we need to make a tile set for our tile map. This is essentially going to be our palette, our available tiles that we can use to draw or paint our whole level. To create a tile set, I've got to select my tile map node and then over in the right inspector uh, next to tile set, I'm going to click on the little down arrow and I'll select new tile set. I've got a new tile set resource now in Godot. If I want to edit it, I'm going to click on its name and a tile set doc will appear on the bottom of the editor. It's very much like that animation editor for the animation sprite that we edited in the last video for our character animations and poses. We've got a sidebar and a main kind of working area. In this sidebar, we need to bring in the images that we're going to use to create tiles for our tile map. So I'm going to press this little plus button and I'm going to go into, if I'm not, into my project assets folder into my world tiles folder. And I'm going to select all of the pictures. So I'll click on the first tile image. I'll hold shift and I'll click on the last one to select them all. And I'll press open. When I do that, it will list for me all of my tiles and I'll select the first one. Actually, this sidebar does not list tiles. It lists pictures. And that's a distinction because you can actually bring in an image if you find one on the internet or you create it for yourself that actually will contain lots of tiles like a tile sheet. And over in the right side of this dock, you can divide that image, that sprite or tile sheet into separate tiles. So these are images. We create the actual tiles over here. In my case, I'm going to make one tile for each picture. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to select the first image and I'm going to press new single tile. When I do that, I have to define two things. I have to define the region for the tile. In other words, what part of this picture is going to be the square tile in my game. In my case, the whole thing for all these pictures is going to be the tile. So I clicked new single tile. I have region selected. I'm going to make sure that snapping is turned on. That's going to help me define the area because you can see I can just click and drag, but I'm not getting a perfect square or perfectly 64 by 64. So snapping helps me out with that, with the grid. I can now click and drag. Whoops click and drag. If I make a mistake, I can just redo that. You'll notice that my grid, these purple lines, I'll make this bigger on my screen, are 32 pixels by 32 pixels per grid square. The snapping options in Godot are a little bit funny. You actually can't change these snap options, how big your snapping grid is until after you define a region. So let's say you define a region and it's not what you want because you want to make these purple lines spaced out differently. You need to make a region first and then you can go over to the inspector of the tile set and change the step under snap options uh, to a different number. In this case, I'm going to use 64 by 64. So I can just snap to the four corners. So now if I click and drag, it'll just snap me to the corners of this picture. So now we have a tile with a region. That's what we can see in the tile. But now we have to go over to collision and define where that tile is going to act like a static body physics object. So under the collision tab, I'm going to create a new rectangle shape. You actually have to click on this little rectangle. And with snapping turned on, I'm going to click and drag and it'll make those little pink handles, those little pink dots. And you'll see that it fills the area with that aqua color again, just like our player collision shape. Okay. This tile is done. I'll do the same thing a few more times. So I'll click on this next picture. I have to create a new single tile. I have to create a region. I've got snapping turned on. I'll click and drag. 
easy. I'll make a collision area. Make sure you click on the rectangle. That's easy to forget. And I'll click and drag and let go. There, that one's done. A few more. This middle a tile object will be for the top of the ground anywhere that's not on an end. So new single tile. I'll click and drag, collision, rectangle, click and drag. One or two more, I'll select this one, new single tile, and I'll click and drag and make a collision area, rectangle, click and drag. I'm gonna skip over several of these tiles and talk about the platform ends, which by the way, these two, and at the end, these two are the ends that use a middle platform, if you like, of this one. So you can make a long platform that looks like it's floating if you use the ends and this one. So for this tile and all the ends of my platforms, I don't necessarily want the character to hit this platform in this area. So when I have this image selected and I press new single tile, the region I create will be the same 64 by 64 pixel. So I'll click and drag, but the collision area is not gonna be including this area. I don't wanna make just a square. So I'm gonna select collision and I'm not gonna select a rectangle shape. I'm gonna create a new polygon. When I do that, the polygon, I wanna to snap to my sides again. So I'm defining a nice you know, square shape with a corner cut off. But in this case, I'm gonna change my step options for my snap options. In this case, I'm gonna make the snapping grid uh, set to 16 by 16 pixel uh, squares. So now I'll have more places where I can snap and create my collision polygon. So under collision, I'll click on a polygon and I'll click and I'll click and click. And I'm gonna go to this one here and then I'll cut up to right about there, I think. And then I'll close the polygon. You have to click on the first dot that you created in order to close it. So you get that aqua fill area in there. I'll do that a couple more times. I'll select this one. I'll make a new single tile. And now the region, it'll be the same square. That's 64 by 64. The collision shape will be a polygon. Again, I'll click in the top corner, click there, 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 there and I'll close the shape. So at this point, I want to save my work. My tile set is a resource in Godot, but it's not been saved. So I'm going to click, I'll make this bottom area shorter, on my tile map again. That'll actually let me see its properties in the inspector. This tile set is a resource in Godot. It'll end when I save it with .tres, that's a Godot resource. So I'll click on that little arrow and I'll select save. And I'm gonna call this in my project folder, um, world tile set. So I'll get rid of the word new and type uh, world there. Okay, so I'll save that in my project folder. This is the fun part. With the tile map selected, you'll see that I have this palette area, I call it the palette, over on the right side of my 2D workspace. I can make this area wider or narrower uh, depending on what I like. And as you can see, when I hover my mouse over my 2D workspace, the tile that I have selected is sticking to my mouse. And if I click, I can place that tile in my world and it's there. It'll act like a static body 2D physics object. Of course, I don't have to just click and click and click. I can just click and drag. It is really that easy. If I don't like a tile that I've placed, I can simply right click or right click and drag to erase. So what I'll do here is I'll create a new platform top with the middle piece there. I will click and drag to create my platform. I want a couple of ends on it. So I'll click there and click and create that tile. I'll select this tile, create this end, and I want it to continue downwards. So I'll use this green tile and click and drag. Maybe I'll make this a little bit taller there. It's really that easy. And of course you can scroll down on your mouse most likely, and you can create a very large world. Uh, before I try this game out, I'm going to create a platform. So I'm going to select each platform end, and maybe there, and I'll select this one and maybe there, and then in the middle of those two. And it should just work. If I press play scene, of course my character will fall. It'll land on the platform. Of course I can walk around and I can jump. Hopefully I can jump on and land on the platform. 
You should be aware though that these platforms, because they are static body objects, they are the kind of platforms that you would bonk your head into. You can't jump uh, over them and expect that you'll go through them and then land nicely like in front of them. We'll create one-way platforms like that where you can jump through them and then land back on them in a future video. But as you can see, this works quite well. A couple of more things about using a tile map and a tile set. You have options for these tiles in terms of their orientation. Up on the top of this palette area, you have options to rotate all of your tiles and you can flip them around horizontally or even vertically. So if I want to create a sideways wall in my game, I can rotate or flip. In fact, this last button that looks like a paintbrush will clear anything that you've done with the rotating or flipping. So now they're at their default. If I want to create a sideways wall, well, I can just rotate all of these tiles around that I can paint, well, a sideways wall if I like, and I'll put a couple of ends on them as well, just like that. So now if I go ahead and play this scene, I will bump into that sideways platform just like a wall. Two more quick things as we finish off this video. You'll notice that my little character is going behind this wall. In other words, my character's a collision shape his little pill shape doesn't include his arms, so his arms actually go behind the platforms or this wall. So to fix the order of our character, if we want the character to be in front of the tiles, well, what we can do is we can change the order of our nodes in our scene dock. Right now, our Steve object is at the top in our level and the tile map is next. But the way Godot draws things in your scene is it draws the objects in order from top to bottom. In other words, it'll draw Steve into your game and then it'll draw the tile map, meaning that the tile map will be in front of Steve. So what I can do is I can just drag Steve down to below the tile map. Make sure you're not dragging it onto the tile map, but just below. And now their order is switched around. So now if I play my scene and go back over to that wall, well, see how my little character's arm is in front of the wall? That's what I want. The very last thing I'll show you in this video is if you do not like the size of your grid. In other words, you think that these tiles are too big or too small, and you don't want to go through the hassle of changing the size of all of these sprite files on your computer, which really wouldn't work out well anyways, what you can do is you can scale your entire tile map, your entire grid. To do that, you would select your tile map node, and then in the inspector under the transform section, you can change the entire tile map's scale here. So if I change this to 0.5 and 0.5, well, all the tiles will now be half as wide and half as tall. That means they'll be 32 by 32, and it will just work. If I move my character up to, let's say, there, he's now in miniature world, and I can press the play scene button, and he'll fall and land and fall and land. Uh, obviously, this is too small for the character, but that's how you could do it. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to uh, the tile map to uh, one and one, okay? You can also, in this transform area, change the position of your tiles. If you want to nudge them around a bit, you can change these X and Y values. So if I want to move my tiles over by 32 each, that's how I would do it, but I'm going to leave them alone, okay? So that will be it for this video. Go ahead and create a large world for your game going off the sides of your screens because in the next video, I'll be showing you how to create a camera that follows you nicely around your level, including bounds or limits for that camera so your camera can't follow you if you fall into the abyss. But that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Godot or Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. That's where I interact with you guys the most, but that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.